with uh, Tennessee head coach Rick Barnes. Coach, thanks for joining us. Welcome to Detroit. Uh, as a reminder, we do have mic holders on either side. Please be sure to introduce yourself, your media affiliation, so Coach can put a name with a face. We'll get going with um, Q&A here, and we'll start out with whoever's ready in the second row on the right. Rob Lewis with BallQuest.com. Coach, just the, the scout, what are a couple of things that jump out at you that are primary focuses when you, when you get ready to play Creighton? Well, there's a, a number of different things. Obviously, one uh, – Transition, they're a uh, really terrific team in transition. Uh, discipline, really have, a, I think, a high level uh, of basketball IQ, and they know each other so well. They know what they're looking for. They want, they know, play within the rhythm of what they do, and just an extremely sound team defensively, and uh, they do a great job of uh, helping each other. And uh, I've known Greg for a long time and uh, coaching against him in the, in the Big 12, and uh, just a terrific basketball coach. And uh, his team, uh, I think, plays the way he wants it play, them to play. Thanks, Coach. We're going to go to the left side in the second row. Yeah, Coach Gentry, SS Tennessee. And uh, Coach McDermott told a story about when he first w was deciding to take the job at Creighton that he called you on the way to the interview. Do you, do you remember that conversation and what you talked about at that time? Well, one thing I'll tell you about Greg is that he is a he's a program builder, and uh, really truly a, a, a great offensive mind. I I would after every time we played him, I would uh, take something from what he did to us and add to what we were doing. And uh, but uh, I'm sure the conversation would have been one that everybody would want him in the lead because he stands for all the right things. He's done it the way that uh, you'd want any coach to do it. He's a guy that could coach at any level. And, uh, uh, and again, when you're in a league that's as competitive as the leagues are that we played in, you want to know that the person that you're competing against is doing it the right way. And uh, you knew he would do that. You knew he would build a high-level program. And I think he did that, you know. And um, he uh, has done it certainly at, at Creighton and everywhere he's been. And you ask anybody that's in coaching today about him, they would – have the utmost respect for him, obviously as a basketball coach, but as a as a a person that represents our business the way you want it, you can't find one better. Do we have follow up here in the second row? No. Okay. West Rucker with uh, twenty four seven Sports. Rick, when you look at Kalkbrenner, the big guy for for Creighton, what sort of challenges does he present, and how much of that experience that your guys have had against some of those? I think every elite big man in the country, pretty much y'all have played this season. How much could that help? Well, again, he's a terrific uh, rim protector. I think he's uh, when he they use him on the offensive end where he facilitates. He sees the floor. He uh, great feel for his teammates and what he wants to do. I think he does a really good job of finding his space where he wants to be effective. And uh, we played against players uh, like you mentioned, but they're all different. And uh, he's a he's a tough cover for uh, our post players, but yet uh, and. They are obviously their drop coverage that they, they use. I mean, he's just kind of daring you. What, what are you going to do here? Forces you into making the right decision. And uh, But uh, he uh, he's a person that you've got to give a lot of attention to. Coach, let's go to the front row here. Larry Leach from the Associated Press. Seems like yesterday you are here for the exhibition game against uh, Michigan State. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about Baylor Shireman? Give us a sky report. And with him and Dalton, are they an example of what can be good about the transfer portal? Yeah, I don't think there's any question that, you know, you give young people an opportunity and they can make the most of it. Uh, and, and I think we know there's players, and we, this tournament you see players that play at different levels that can shine in, when the big light's on them. And I think both of those guys have one made just unbelievable impacts on, on their teams. And uh, Shireman, when you see him, he's relentless. You know, he uh, you, you can't, can't stop. I mean, he's... Uh, Got a great feel, and again, uh, Greg has done a great job, I think, putting all those guys in a position where they have a comfort level about them, but uh, they play a lot of minutes. They don't foul, uh, but he is a, another guy that if you just blink for a second, he's going he's gonna to beat you some way, and uh, so you've got to be on edge. Let's go to the, on the left side in the back row, Coach. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Rick, you talked about program builders, and I would argue that probably all four of you guys here are 
program builders, but you're also in a business of results and whether it's trying to get to the fi final four, win a national championship, there's always that push pull. How do you stick to your convictions to kind of build the program when there's also the need to achieve whatever it is the next thing on the to-do list is? Well, I, I think obviously the key is adjustments. You know, when, when the game changes, uh, you, you've got to change and make the necessary adjustments. Uh, uh, but I do, we do believe in uh, building through, you know, we want high school players. And now if I were at a different level, I might not think that today. I think a year from now when the COVID year is over with, it could ch sway back a little bit where the older guys aren't, uh, aren't uh, here as much, you know, not as many older guys. But I think that's been the, the case throughout our time in basketball is that there's been so many different changes from, you know, everything. And, and so I think you have to be able to adapt. And the guys that I know that I've been able to grow up in the business with and that are still with us and doing it are guys that uh, have that ability to adapt and but yet not get away from their core philosophy in terms of what they believe. Coach, we're going to go to the – right side here in the fourth row. Rick Russo, WVLT Knoxville. Coach, I know the fellows want to win for you. What does it mean to you to see them have success? Well, again, I'm fortunate that, you know, I've been able to be a part of college basketball for a long time. They, they get a four or five year run. And uh, it is something that, um, that they will look back one day and think that, hey, you know, I, I had a chance to be a part of that. And uh, it's something that you never ever take for granted and uh, to get here is, is hard. It gets, it's getting harder and harder every year. And the move is, uh, I mean, we know that every seed has proven they could win, and it's hard to move on. But uh, I just, I, I love it for our players. We've got a good group of guys. And uh, a year ago, they found a way to get to the Sweet 16 without Sakai. And, and uh, as coaches, we do what we do for the players. And uh, we appreciate when they, do what we ask them to do as well. And when you get a group of guys that have bought into each other and are willing to play for each other, you want to see it last as long as you, it possibly can. Back to the left side in the third row. Yeah, Rick, did, did y'all come out okay health-wise from, from Charlotte? And is, uh, is Santi good to go tomorrow? He, yeah, he's just under the weather a little bit right now, but he, uh, we expect him to be ready, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right side, row two. Coach, what makes uh, Creighton's kind of drop defense unique, and, and how do you get how do you avoid getting you know caught into that trap of, of taking a bunch of mid-range shots? Well, we don't care about the mid. I mean, we do what we do. We're going to do. I mean, we're not based strictly on analytics. We're going to get our players in position. If they're good mid-range shooters, we want them to take those shots. And uh, what makes them good is because they're solid. They they do what they do. They're uh, a, a team that they don't foul. Uh, we don't believe me. I don't think there's a team in the country that. Uh, teaches to foul and uh, you know we don't want to foul either we want to play a little bit different than they do but yet uh, we're not trying to foul I can tell you that because uh, I mean they're a good shooting team a free throw shooting team and but uh, there's there's so many different ways you can play defense just like there's so many different ways you can play offense and they've got their style that that's gotten them here we have and you can pretty much expect both teams are going to do what they do that has gotten them this far back to the left side in the fourth row Rick, you hear the term players coach today, just the idea of you know coaches having a stronger relationship uh, with their players. How have you evolved uh, as a coach in terms of how you relate to your guys throughout your career? Well, one, I've always known it's about them, and there's times in the past I didn't do a great job, and I've said many times I've gone back and apologized to players that I didn't think I did my job with them. But uh, uh, I think if you ask our players today, uh, it would bother me if they didn't tell you I was the most consistent guy on the floor every day. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to do my job, uh, but when it's over with, I'm going to we're two people, and I'm going to respect them for that. But I hope they respect the job as a coach and staff we have to do. And and again, I think the best thing a coach can do is consistency every day. What, whatever it is you're demanding with your details, you got to stay with that. But when it, when it's over with. Uh, you want them to know that, hey, if, if you've been on them hard, hey, there's a reason behind it. And uh, But uh, I don't want them to ever not look forward to coming back to practice, not looking forward to coming back to with our individual workouts, whatever it may be. And it goes back, it's not just me, it's our staff. I mean, uh, we're constantly talking, uh, our staff. We have a, a great feel for our team. And 
when you're around people as much as we're around each other, you can read body language, you can read where guys are. And, and the question is, to me, is transparency. You've got to confront it head on. You just can't think it's going to go away if there is a problem. And, and, uh, but a, a lot of it goes back to our staff. I just have a great group of guys around me that are as fully invested as you can possibly be. Anything else for Coach Barnes? Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.